Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today's topic is expansion tanks. Now, in my last video, I explained how an expansion tank works in conjunction with a temperature and pressure relief valve to help prevent water from discharging out of there when it doesn't need to. Today, we're going to take a little walk down memory lane and we'll talk about the history of expansion tanks and how they've changed over the years. Way back in the day, we had really basic expansion tanks on heating systems. When you had a boiler, hydronic, hot water, radiant heat, whatever you want to call it, when you had a boiler that would heat up a house, as water heats up in these systems, the water expands and it needs somewhere to go. The old school expansion tanks would be installed higher than the highest radiator in the home and they'd be open in the atmosphere. They'd be wide open at the top. You'd have two pipes coming into these systems. One would be the fill pipe, one would be the overflow pipe. So if somebody's filling up the radiator system with water and they put too much water in the system, system instead of discharging water out and onto the floor, you'd have an overflow pipe inside there and then that secondary pipe would head back down to the basement so you wouldn't have a mess. Those were the really basic expansion tanks. They were just open in the atmosphere and on, on these old houses we'd usually find them in a bedroom mounted high up on the wall. Go a little bit forward in time and we'd have closed expansion tanks. These were these big steel, big round steel tanks. They'd be in the basement and they'd be mounted in between the floor joists and there'd be one pipe coming in and this would, this would allow some water to come into these big tanks when you added water to your system. And then you'd have a, a, a second opening, you'd have a drain valve at, at the bottom side of it, but that was it. Normally, when you add water to the system, there'd be a bunch of air inside the tank. Some of that air would compress with the pressure, but for the most part, it'd be filled up with air. And air compresses, liquids do not. So as the water would expand in volume, the air would compress and we wouldn't have any problems. Until eventually, all of the air would end up getting absorbed into the water and then you'd have what's called a waterlogged expansion tank and then the water's got nowhere to go. So then the boiler fires up, the water tries to expand and then the pressure relief valve does its job and it relieves pressure by leaking onto the floor. And then you know, usually you'd have somebody say, oh, I got a leaking valve, let's replace it. They put a new valve in, the second valve leaks and then they go, all right, what's the problem? We better call a heating contractor and the heating contractor would figure out you got a waterlogged expansion tank. And the fix, the, the, the old fix for those systems was to drain the tank. And those, those things are old today. I mean, they've been around for a, a long time. I mean, the oldest ones, they might be 100 years old today or approaching that. So they'd be really rusted on the bottom. You couldn't simply open the valve and drain all the water out. They'd, they'd need to like drill it out or replace the valve and it, it'd, be a, it'd be a big deal. So today they don't use those types of open air or they don't use those types of simple gigantic expansion tanks. They use much smaller tanks that have a rubber bladder, a rubber diaphragm that separates the air from the water. So as the water expands in these newer expansion tanks, it's actually separated from the air. The air will never get absorbed into the water and they work like a charm and they're a lot smaller. They're, they're about the size of a basketball. And those things can be installed on, they can be installed vertically, horizontally on the pipe. They can be above the pipe, below the pipe, doesn't really matter. Manufacturers let you put them wherever you want. And they're also used on municipal water systems. When these systems are installed, the, the key component here, the, the big thing that a lot of people end up getting wrong is that they need to be pressurized to match the pressure in the system they're being installed on. If you're installing it on a potable, potable water system, you need to pressurize it to match that system. So if you got 70 PSI in your household supply, you need to pressurize that pressure tank, or you need to pressurize the expansion tank to 70 PSI as well. And you can simply do that with a bike pump. They have a Schrader valve on there and you, you pump it up to, to the right pressure, you use a tire gauge to check that pressure, 
and once it's at the right setting, then it gets installed. If you simply install it the way it comes from the factory, I don't know what all manufacturers do. I know that Watts, Watts ships them out at 20 PSI. If you simply install it without pre-charging it, you're still gonna have problems because it's not gonna be nearly enough pressure inside that tank to match the household pressure, and you're probably still gonna have problems with your TNP leaking. So that's, uh, I, I think that's everything I know about expansion tanks. That's a, that's a quick little history of them, and some information about what to do if you have problems even after you install an expansion tank. I'm Ruben Saltzman, thanks for watching.